Congress. Hello. How are you doing? You'd think a congresswoman in office nearly 40 years would already know most of the people here at the popular 818 Club. Are you a regular? But it's new ground for Marcy Kaptur, whose Ohio district changed dramatically after redistricting, going from a safe Democratic seat to a place Donald Trump would have won in 2020. These men gather most mornings at Bud's Restaurant in Defiance, a new conservative part of Kaptur's district. Is Marcy Kaptur somebody you'll vote for? No. <laughs> no way. Joe Clements is voting for Captor's Republican challenger, J.R. Majewski, endorsed by former President Donald Trump. Majewski, he's been... Where is he? Where is J.R.? My name is J.R. Majewski. I was born and raised right here in Toledo, Ohio. And I'm willing to do whatever it takes to return this country back to its former glory. What's up, everybody? Major Retired Richard Ojeda here. And isn't it amazing to see these conversations this time of year when the media is talking with voters and putting content like this on TV? I talk to voters all the time, all year round. And yes, especially so now because it's on more people's minds. But the thing that's always on my mind is how people can possibly still support Donald Trump. Trump's endorsement is a... Me. Yeah. I like Trump. That's controversial. Even here. He tried to overthrow our government, and that's the bottom line, and you guys can't see it. I'm sorry. It's a breath of fresh air to see someone call out anti American nonsense when they see it, like the man did here in this video. Donald Trump did try to overthrow our government, and none of us can understand how people can't see that. Majewski is an election denier who was at the Capitol on January 6th, though he insists he left when, quote, it got ugly. Is that a deal breaker? Oh, yeah. For me, I would never vote for him. Not for any of those people there on January 6th. Not a deal breaker for everyone. I don't think that would influence me to vote against him. CNN's K-File unearthed evidence Majewski repeatedly promoted QAnon conspiracies, though he's since denied being a follower. Seth Peters isn't sure about him yet. And I want to see how he would improve the area, how he would do in Congress. Through a spokesman, Majewski declined an interview or to share details about any public events where he might answer such questions. Nothing could possibly be more obvious. I remember the world reaction upon the events of January the 6th. People were astonished that America was looking like a corrupt third world dictatorship, the kinds of places I was deployed to throughout my career. Elected, I won't bow to establishment pawns or power hungry radicals. I will hold my own and demand that once again, America stands independent and strong like the country that I fought for. That was an ad for J.R. Majewski, the far right Republican candidate trying to unseat Democratic Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur in Ohio's 9th district this fall. A pillar of Majewski's campaign has been his self-promotion as a combat veteran. Specifically, Majewski sold himself to voters as having served a particularly tough combat tour in Afghanistan. There's just one problem. The Air Force has no record of it. I served a career in the military to defend America. That means defending the rights of every person, even those we disagree with. But there are base unifying factors that make us America. We were founded as a unique country because we broke away from the authoritarian rule of a king. To become a democracy and to continue to grow so that everyone has a shot at the American dream and has a seat at the table. Yesterday, the AP got a hold of Majewski's military records, which indicate that Majewski, quote, never deployed to Afghanistan. His actual military service appears to just be a six-month stint helping to load planes at an airbase in Qatar, a longtime U.S. ally, very far from what most people would call a tough combat tour. MAGA Republicans have built a movement to fight all of those core tenets of America. Their movement is anti-democratic. They want to take our vote away. It is anti-freedom. They want to remove choice and instill a cult theocracy in place of law and logic. And it's about the corporate dominion and rule of a few over the masses. They want to take trickle-down economics to a whole new level, where corporate monopolies dictate life to lowly peasants so those who sit at the top never have to work a day in their lives. 
It takes about two seconds to figure this out. Look at the figureheads of their movement. Donald Trump is a career con artist who lives and dies in court conning people out of money without ever straining a muscle in his misshapen orange body. Dr. Oz, J.D. Vance, Blake Masters. Do you think across all of them they've ever put in a sum total of one day's honest work in their lives? They are a bunch of business elite con artists who have manipulated and cheated our government to net themselves a free lunch at the taxpayer's expense. The only reason they want to be in politics is to take that lucrative game to the next level. As Americans, we can't be dumb enough to fall for it and elect our own worst enemy in office. It's sad that politics is a word that has been almost completely corrupted. It used to mean the science of determining the best operation of society. Now, thanks to the MAGA takeover of the GOP, on their side, politics is the science of spending as much money as possible in hoodwinking the public into thinking they give a crap about us, when in reality their only true love is their own financial portfolio. This is the fight we're up against with the MAGA fascists. It's red alert, all hands on deck. If you care about democracy and you love this country, you will be doing everything you can to fight the MAGA disease. And that's a fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.